Hey everyone, Armitage here again, and today we're going to be continuing our series on how to win a tournament structure contest. Last time we went into detail on making an optimized roster, and now I want to discuss entering multiple rosters to maximize your chances at taking first in a tournament. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what do we want to enter, what do we want to try to win. So we're going to go to League of Legends, and we're going to use EU LCS as an example again. And you can see that there's all kinds of entries, so let's go by entry fee. Obviously we don't want to do those, those cost a lot of money. So there's all kinds of tournaments. There's Nexus Rush, which is $100 per entry and only has three entries, but you can win up to $1,000. So it really depends on how much you want to spend. And that's my next point is you should only put in, you know, however much you're willing to lose. And my typical rule of thumb is 35% into a single split that day. So 35% to EU, 35% to NA, et cetera. And really it comes down to how much you have to spend. So we're going to be taking a look at... Um, Baron Buff, which is a $2.50 tournament down here. And you can have a max of 10 entries. First place gets $75. So in this example, we're going to be making 10 teams, meaning it's going to cost us $25 to enter, enter this tournament. So we need to make at least fourth to make our money back. And third gives us a profit. And obviously, first is a, is a decent profit. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing I do when I enter a room is I open up Notepad. So let's, let's do that. Bring it over here. And I enter in my projected winner. So we're going to be taking a look at these matches. So I have Giants versus Copenhagen Wolves. Um, Giants should win. So Giants favored. We have H2K versus... Gambit, I have H2K heavily favored. Um, I've got SK versus Elements, and this is going to be a close match, but I'm going to put Elements as slightly favored. And then I have Origin versus Rocket. I have Origin heavily favored. And then I have could take a look. It is Fnatic versus Unicorns Love. So it's, it's Love, and I have Fnatic being heavily favored, mainly because they haven't lost yet. So the second thing I do is look at what teams are cheap and have a chance at winning. So out of these teams, let's look. Giants is favored. They're in the 8,300 range. Um, that's a bit too much. So they're not cheap. H2K is favored. Let's look at them. So Hyarnan, okay, okay. So Hyarnan and Odoamne are somewhat cheap. 7,800, that's still a little on the high end, but still cheap for a team I think is going to win pretty handily. And then SK versus Elements, and I have Elements favored. So Elements is pretty cheap, and th th this is an average cost, uh, a little bit below average. So that's good, that's good. And let's see, Origin is expensive, and Fnatic is expensive. So right then you should know when you're building rosters that you're probably not going to be able to build a roster full of four Origin or four Fnatic just because of their cost. So the next step I do is I figure out, okay, what teams have a high chance of winning and we're going to build around those teams. So out of these five teams, I have Giant, H2K, this is an undecided match, uh, Origin, and Fnatic. So those are the teams we want to build around. So let's do that. So... The first thing to do is I start over here, and we do Giants H2K, Giants Origin, Giants Fnatic. And then we go to the next, next one. And we have H2K Origin, H2K Fnatic, and then the last one, Origin Fnatic. So as I said before, we can look over this, and we can easily see that Origin Fnatic is probably not going to be possible, um, considering how expensive they are. So you'll likely have to splash a third team for this roster. And this makes us have six teams. And basically, the strategy behind this is we have picked all the games we think that we know who's going to win. So we know, or we're predicting, that Giants is going to win, H2K is going to win, Fnatic is going to win, and Origin is going to win. And by winning, I mean having the most points, um, having a clear victory, getting very good fantasy points, et cetera. Okay, so this leaves us with four extra teams, um, considering we're trying to get to 10 teams. 
And that probably means we want to touch on the SK elements game. So basically, I would write down SK plus projected winner. This could be Fnatic, Origin, etc. And the same thing for elements. Projected. OK. So that gives us eight teams and pretty much covers all the games we think that are going to be win, uh, winning matches. We can do two upset teams. So that means we want to look back at the matches and figure out who has the highest potential to upset. I think that Gambit has a decently high potential to upset H2K, and I think that Rocket might beat Origin. Just based off the last time they played, Rocket did beat Origin, I believe. So we probably want to do a Gambit plus winner, like Fnatic, and Rocket plus winner, like Fnatic. So this gives us our 10 teams. Uh, when I actually make the teams, it's going to be up to you to emphasize who you want to pick as the four people. For example, if I was making Giants H2K, what I mean is, who are you going to pick, four H2K or four Giants? And this is really important to think about. Um, basically, when you're doing this, you want to decide on who has a higher potential to get more points. In my opinion, I think that H2K has a higher chance because Copenhagen Wolves usually just doesn't fight, so I think that Giants will get less points than H2K. But once again, this is kind of left up to chance sometimes. You can really do some research and figure out what teams like to fight, what teams like to give up points, et cetera, and use that to your advantage. Sometimes salaries will dictate how many people you can have on a team. Let me show you an example. So if we try to pick three, even with rain over, three Fnatic, we only have an average, and let's just pick a team to give us an idea of how much we have. We only have an average of 7,200 per person. So that means we definitely can't fill with origin or anything like that. We could take, you know, this could be an elements team that we want to build around. And we have plenty left over. So we could even maybe take Huni up here and drop this to give us elements. This looks like a solid team. Now, th the reason we can do this is because elements is really cheap and Fnatic is pretty expensive. So you want to use this to your advantage. But as I was saying before, sometimes salaries will dictate who you can emphasize. So if I was building, let's clear this out. If I was building a team that emphasized giants and I wanted to take, for example, let's just pick these four members and this, this is way too, this is way too heavy. So basically what it means is that Giants is expensive enough that I can't really fill in with Fnatic uh, cost effective. So I need to pick Giants and someone else of my winners that's cheap enough to do so. So that pretty much covers uh, how to make multiple rosters and build teams around them. So if you're entering a contest that has less than 10 entries, the best thing you can do is select the best teams depending on how many entries you have. So if we were entering a contest with five entries, I would probably pick Let's see, Origin Giant, H2K Origin, H2K Fanatic, Origin Fanatic, and maybe Elements and Projected Winner. And I would choose those five teams based off of my prediction on how many points they were going to get or something like that. Um, basically, you want to scale back if there's only a certain amount of entries you can enter in the contest that you're entering. If what you're entering has more entries, such as a Dragon Buff, 20 entries, etc., what I would do is I would build way more SK and element teams. I could have SK with Giants. I could have SK with H2K. I could have SK with Fnatic. And I could have SK with Origin. That would give us another four teams. And same with elements. And that would give us another four teams. And you'd pre pretty much have a team for every possible outcome. And then you would create upset teams just like we did here. You just have more coverage if one specific team gets more points than the rest of the field. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I would suggest going into maybe a Baron buff or a Dragon buff or even a two quarter arcade and trying to get first through fourth using this strategy. You can learn a lot from looking at other players uh, results. So you can enter a tournament. Let's say you did this for the Dragon buff during this tournament and you placed fifth. You can look at the teams that got fourth through first and see what they did that you didn't and see if it was based off of people you picked 
or if the strategy you were approaching for making the teams or if they had a specific upset team that you didn't. But you can really learn a lot by going back into your completed contest and looking at who won and who didn't. So the last thing I want to say is if you're having trouble figuring out who you think is projected to win or lose, we actually write a lot of articles uh, up on our fantasy news here, and you can check out our blog for predictions. So here's predictions for the LPL. We've got predictions for the NA. We've got predictions for EU. And this could be really helpful even if you're confident in your teams because it might point out things that you didn't know or things that maybe, you know, for example, Forgiven being suspended is a huge thing for if you're putting money on Gamma Gaming. I would not put money without him. So these are the types of things you can find out on our blog that are really helpful when you're building your rosters. So let's recap really quick. The first thing you want to do is select the tournament room you want to enter. And this is based off of how much you want to spend, how many entries you want to make, etc. The second thing you want to do is analyze the day, figuring out which teams are projected to win and which teams are projected to get good points or be cheap for having good points. The third thing you want to do is build around the teams that you are projected to win. Doing this involves taking, you know, let's say you had four projected teams, you want to take the first team and combine it with the last three teams and take the second team and combine it with the last two teams, etc. just like our example. And the last thing you want to do is optimize these rosters based off of how many points you expect them to get. And optimizing rosters can be tricky, but if you watch the first video, it's very helpful in figuring out the best way to get the most points out of a team. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll be getting into more advanced strategies in the next couple videos. I really appreciate you guys watching and let me know what you think of the series so far.